now moving on to our uh, last speaker of the session uh, professor sashi devan vijay kumar from cuset and he will be talking about information core screening and its effect on local and global outcomes in a complex adaptive system uh, professor uh, vijay kumar over to you yeah okay uh, ah, yeah. yes deepak and i i wish them many uh, happy and productive years uh, ahead um uh, of course i i don't have to you know, say anything about their scientific contributions but uh, often along with that uh, what goes without uh, saying explicitly is that uh, both of them are actually uh, great teachers and uh, great uh, mentors as well um so today i am a teacher and i i personally when i like teach uh, i try to take a leaf out of their um, uh, techniques and how they approach a subject and the way they express and uh, so on Uh, of course deepak was my phd guide and uh, it's a bit difficult to uh, say in a short time uh, all the impact he had on uh, my life um, but i just want to mention one thing uh, that uh, so midway through my phd um, i had some kind of a personal crisis and uh, it was great great grave enough that you know um, almost put uh, an end to my phd dreams and not just phd but uh, other aspects uh, of life as well um and so i had to take a few months off actually and then uh, it was deepak uh, his support a uh, constant support throughout this period that helped me to stay on track and i remember one particular occasion uh, in which um, me and my wife uh, met him in his office uh, and uh, we were talking and uh, one so one particular sentence he said uh, is that uh, i expect uh, you to be uh, back soon um, uh, so and then in his typical fashion he took a pause and then he said i said expect and not uh, near near hope um, so that that's very typical deepak and uh, i'm sure that you will uh, you will realize that it's that's the that's his style um, so clear concise and but uh, very uh, impactful um, so this um, so 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 i will uh, come back to uh, uh, the, the scientific part uh, which is um, as the title says uh, deals with the uh, complex uh, adaptive system Uh, it's also course graining uh, but the course graining of a slightly different kind than uh, what uh, uh, we encountered so far so let's uh, let me start with a cartoonish picture of a complex uh, adaptive system so you have a system of uh, entities uh, you can call them generally as interacting agents um, shown in different shapes and color to indicate that you know they, they are potentially heterogeneous in nature okay. and typically in a in an adaptive system Okay. they generate uh, via their interaction some kind of global patterns okay and uh, you know the agents actually react and adapt you know, to these global patterns that's where the adaptation comes so typically in these systems uh, agents uh, why do they want to adapt uh, they they have certain optimization goals okay. uh, so one can find many examples in which this abstract uh, theme is at play maybe uh, uh, famous famous ones are financial markets and ecologies of animals and so on all right so we are going to talk about uh, this uh, global patterns and uh, you know changing the nature of that global patterns or ch changing the perception about that global patterns by the agents how that is going to influence the uh, global behavior the, the collective outcome in the systems okay so so a generic theme about this global patterns is that uh, the agents actually look uh, uh, look look at these patterns uh, you know uh, in the past okay you look for these patterns in the past and then to decide uh, uh, to what to do in the future Okay, that's basically the adaptation. So the particular question uh, I will address in this, and I will show some small results uh, that how uh, differential access to these global patterns. Differential access means that suppose the agents have, you know, uh, they cannot perceive the, the global pattern its in entirety, uh, but there are qualitative and quantitative differences between the agents in the way they perceive these global patterns. Uh, how that is going to affect the system? So that that's what uh, uh, I'm going to talk about. All right. okay so this is that uh, a more precise slightly more precise uh, way of uh, defining things so this global patterns they act as kind of uh, data input to the agents based on which they make their decisions and the differential access for example could be uh, qualitative or quantitative so by qualitative i mean that for example it could be different levels of course training of that i will uh, come to specific examples or it could merely be quantitative that you know you you have access to more number of bits uh, of this global patterns okay so uh, why that is of importance because you know that uh, this is a very again a common theme that you know you don't perceive uh, you know everything in its entirety so such coarse graining of information they can that can come about by a variety of features 
uh, it could be that the agents uh, themselves have some limitation in the uh, information processing capacity because it's energy consuming uh, or maybe that the resources available are you know limited so that you don't want to see the full thing uh, or it could be simply that you know the inherent nature of the data itself is such that uh, it's available uh, uh, in coarse grain form uh, to some of the agents and not to the others okay so the the the, the paradigm I, I would like to uh, 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 to express these things quantitatively is actually that of the minority game uh, where uh, so it's a game in which uh, you have a set of agents uh, who has to choose between two options so you can think of them as two restaurants or something a and b so in each round it's a multi round game in each round you have to select either a or b and they do it uh, simultaneously and independently there is no interaction between the agents per se direct interaction so that's what it says and uh, if you are end up in the minority, then uh, you win basically. You get the payoff one, and if you are in the majority, you lose. So that's the game. It's it's a simultaneous and repeated uh, multi-agent game. So how do the agents decide uh, given in a in a given round uh, what to do? Well, that they use some certain predict uh, predicting rules. Actually, these predicting rules are called strategies. So it's basically a rule which actually projects the past information to future uh, action, either A or B. So it, typically, an agent has a couple of uh, such strategies and adaptation basically means that you keep a tab on the score how well these strategies perform in predicting which of them is the minority side okay, in the past and then you keep a score of the strategies and uh, decide uh, current uh, uh, and at any round you use the best one so that's that's the uh, entire setting so the setting uh, why it is of importance to answer the previous question is that this actually makes it very uh, um, you know, uh, I can express the questions regarding the course thing in a very clear manner in this kind of a setting. Okay. All right. So as I said, uh, that's the past information, the course graining and so on that goes into the strategy. So certain strategies use uh, uh, um, course grained information, certain others don't and so on. For example, the past information could be the winning side in the last 10 rounds. That's just the identity of, okay, which side was the minority in the past few rounds, whether it is A or B. Or it could be that uh, the uh, you know uh, another information could be that exactly how many agents choose uh, A or B. Okay. That's a very detailed information. But remember that both of that information uh, uh, is used to predict uh, which of them is going to be the minority side. So for the same purpose. Okay. So given this, uh, the coarse graining basically means that uh, different levels of coarse graining is represented uh, here in this figure uh, by a parameter k. So k equal to two basically means that the agents uh, that's the maximum coarse graining. You just know the identity of the minority side in the past, and k equal to n plus one means that that's the maximum coarse grain. Um, sorry, the minimum uh, coarse graining or maximum resolution, where you know exactly how many agents are there in uh, the minority. And of course, there are intermediate uh, levels of coarse graining as well. Uh, and this coarse grain data, as I said, is available to the agents for the past m round, so that you can call it as the memory length. You remember that for the past m length. So these are uh, typical examples for how. Uh, for coarse graining of k equal to 2 and k equal to n plus 1, how do they look? In the left, you see that it's a mapping from you know, uh, a binary uh, information, A or B, which side was the minority in the past three days, two agents action, which is A or B. Uh, but on the right, it's actually mapping the detailed information, like how many exactly agents were there uh, in, 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 the, in the two sides, uh, two agents action. Okay, so uh, what do we would like to uh, you know uh, know about the system? Uh, that's of course the individual and uh, how how individual and global behavior is affected by this. So the individual optimization is reflected in the average payoff of the agents. Uh, what what do they get out of this game? And global behavior one can characterize it by uh, what is known as an inefficiency parameter. So it basically uh, measures the fluctuation in the attendance, uh, fluctuation in the in, in how many agents uh, actually choose A. So it's N A is the number of agents in A. Uh, then uh, that's basically that. So one by four is for the random choice uh, uh, case where the agents simply select randomly between A and B. And anything less than that means that you know agents actually kind of achieve some kind of a coordination at a global uh, level. Okay, so this, this, these are the things we are interested in uh, in the system. Okay, so I will uh, give that, I will tell you uh, what happens when you change the, the course gaining, uh, uh, what happens to the inefficiencies shown uh, here. Uh, where we have separated odd and even values of k uh, because there is a difference between uh, those two. And what you see is that uh, it, uh, the inefficiency is actually a minimum uh, at some particular memory length and that actually continuously decreases uh, as uh, you increase k. Uh, but you also see that uh, you know, for certain uh, odd values of k, this red on the right, uh, you see that the inefficiency is actually 
you know uh, goes uh, the minimum inefficiency uh, is actually uh, well below uh, the other uh, values so there exists an optimum intermediate coarse graining it seems like uh, that at which uh, the inefficiency is actually minimized uh, uh, on the left you see that uh, the, 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 uh, you know the, the minima are almost uh, uh, the same so uh, going a little bit deeper uh, if i plot uh, the optimal memory length versus coarse graining k is the coarse graining parameter then the optimal memory length stays constant at the two extremes that is on the left and on the right and then it uh, decreases in between okay so one can uh, work out a scaling theory for this um, uh, based on uh, it's it's basically uh, related to the dimension of what is known as a reduced strategy space um, called as a crowd anti crowd theory simple scaling theory nothing complicated so one can show that uh, at at low values of k this mk actually is a constant it's its log n uh, also at very high values of k uh, it is actually a constant it is 2 okay the memory optimal memory is uh, 2 uh, at very uh, large coarse grain and there is uh, there are a couple of uh, transitions uh, uh, that uh, from that constant uh, one constant to the other there is first transition and that transition actually goes like the k value at which this transition happens goes like square root n and then uh, the other one later one actually goes uh, like n so uh, the right word picture actually shows eta min the minimum of the inefficiency how that depends upon k and uh, you can see that there is an optimal coarse graining and that optimal coarse graining also uh, one can show that it actually goes like uh, square root n all right uh, so uh, uh, going a step further what happens when you put uh, these two kinds of agents together in a system for example if you have the k equal to two agents the minimally coarse grained agents and k equal sorry the other way around k equal to two is uh, uh, minimally resolved and k equal to n plus one is uh, maximally resolved uh, if you put those kind of agents uh, then it seemed then uh, so then what we find is that uh, i have plotted their average payoff versus the memory of the type one agent for various values of n the blue corresponds to the type one uh, you know the, the agent with less information in some sense and the, the red one with uh, more and you see that the blue guys can actually perform well uh, you know um, uh, uh, for a certain parameter ranges so the uh, the, the right hand uh, the right hand figure actually shows a much uh, uh, a broader theme of that where you actually also vary the fraction of these two kinds of agents in the population and you can see that the blue surface actually goes above the red surface for um, a certain range of parameters. Uh, professor, you have two more minutes. Yeah, I, I, I need only two minutes. So basically what happens is that one can, uh, uh, one can understand this deeply by, uh, by uh, looking at uh, how the information is processed by the two type of agents. And basically what happens is that uh, uh, if, if you are playing, if you are approaching this at a, at a certain level of coarse graining, you are privy to information which is, uh, which is not uh, readily available to the other agents. And this 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 need not be the best you know the the, the what is it the maximally uh, resolved information. So discernible patterns arise out of activity of agents uh, with let's say a certain number of a certain uh, range of coarse graining, but that's visible only to the guys at the other uh, level of coarse graining. So this one can quantify this, which I have not uh, shown here by the information content in the time series contingent on past and so on. So the general uh, message is that, uh, you know, um, uh, in this context is that, uh, you know, more data may cause harm. Okay? Detailed information may not be always helpful, always useful. And for homogeneous population, by homogeneous, I mean that uh, uh, a population only at a certain level of coarse graining. Okay? They use information only at a certain a specific level of coarse graining. Uh, for them, uh, the emergent coordination or the, the, the inefficiency uh, or the efficiency is maximal at an intermediate level of uh, coarse graining and not at the maximal or the minimal level. All right, this we uh, I talked about, and this relationship uh, between this information asymmetry between uh, the, the agents and individual payoffs seem to be very complex, as I showed. Uh, it depends upon the specific composition uh, of the population and so on. Okay, so that's the main uh, thing I have to say. Uh, so we we have uh, looked into other aspects of this game uh, in the past. Um, um, there are some publications, and uh, uh, so basically, this uh, work has been done with uh, Kushal and Sitata Singha. And uh, I should say that you know uh, the minority game, uh, a completely different direction of this uh, game has been what uh, I was working with uh, Deepak, and uh, I think I think that was the first time he started working in mechanophysics with uh, I think a generous uh, <laughs> you know, a push by uh, Vikas Da as well. So thank you, and I would be happy to listen to any comments. Thank you, Professor Vijay Kumar. Uh, questions?
Okay, if there are no questions, then well, I should ah. like to ask one. Ah. Yes. Yeah, people. So you have said that these agents with less information can outperform those with more. Can you elaborate? So by less information uh, here, uh, basically what is meant is that uh, they know only you know which side was the minority, not for example uh, exactly how many agents and so on. So what are the certain conditions? What are the certain conditions under which it happens? Hmm. Uh huh. Um, we can only say that um, by analyzing, for example, in the, the for example, you can s uh, see that. Uh, so, if you remember, there is this uh, H function, which is actually uh, measures uh, what is the predictability in in, in time series contingent on the mm. past. So, if mm. that is non-zero uh, for your level of coarse graining, then uh, then you can actually outcompete the others. That that's the basic. Uh, that that's what basically happens. Okay. Thank you. I, I, Sashi, I had a question about the coarse graining right. procedure that you use. Are you losing the number of agents that you have as you coarse grain? Or, and how does that manifest? No, uh, the coarse graining here basically means that uh, um, no, you, you don't lose the number. Basically, you are looking at uh, um, the, for example, in this game, for example, if, if, if there are two choices, A and B, uh, coarse graining basically means that uh, you look at for example, only uh, the identity of uh, the winning side in the past. For example, uh, it's it's like looking at which side, A or B. So that's that's like uh, this. So on the left, uh, you see that it's much more coarse grain than on the right. So but here, for example, you 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 have only information about the identity of the minorities. I see. But suppose you're, right. but yeah. But if you have multiple number of agents, like so, you're not integrating over some of the agents as you would do. No, these are actually, you know, the, the agents, uh, they are fixed in their strategies. I mean, this is like a quench disordered system. Um, you, you select the strategies and then uh, once and for all in the beginning, randomly selected, but then you stay with those uh, till the end. I see. Thanks. You're muted. Uh, sorry. Um, there is another question in the chat box yep. uh, by Chandra Shekhar Ayer. Uh, can we extend this kind of analysis to other games like Prisoner's Dilemma, etc.? Uh, presumably, others actually, we are actually looking at uh, you know, other settings where you know, these general themes actually play out. I, I'm not sure whether about the results uh, will, uh, will, 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 for example, the result that an intermediate level of course screening actually is better because uh, there are features of this game like the minority rule, the minority wins. Uh, makes it very uh, typical. Uh, um, uh, so for a game like Prisoner's Dilemma, uh, I'm not sure. But but presumably one can actually, you know, whenever you have uh, such, you know, you see that the general theme uh, can play out in, in other games as well, where you use information to predict uh, future actions. Any more questions? Uh, if not, then uh, thank you, Professor Vijay Kumar, once again.